So, uh, my name is also Christian, Christian Andersson. I uh, live in Gothenburg and uh, I work as an agile coach. I'm an associate trainer and also a consultant at We Are Movement. So, today I would like to talk a little bit about agile development and compliance and regulations and share some findings. I also would like to have some uh, of your views, if possible. So, so let's start a little bit. Do you have any compliance regulations that you work with or struggle with or something? Give me some ideas. System safety. Yeah, thank you. And why is that a problem? Or is it a problem? Maybe or maybe not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, is it hard to mix it with agile development in some sense? Anything else besides functional safety? Quality. Sorry? CO2. CO2? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's new for me. Yeah. ISO reviews. <laughs> ISO reviews of your management system. Okay. Uh, yeah. Something related to quality as well. <coughs> quality, yeah. besides your quality management system. Yeah. It's yeah. Part of it, but then how do you in include the quality activities that the teams do in the agile world? Okay, quality in in general. Yeah. Yeah. So. We all have some compliance and regulations, and there we have one more. Homologation to get the product certified for a certain market. Yeah. Something where you homologate the complete product, right, at the end. Yeah. I think we could have a question for Joe regarding that. In the um, in the Tesla factory, you I think you know what kind of question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I will also talk a little bit about this. But some compliance and regulation standards they they do not only state what should be the outcome or the result. They also say what activities you do need, what documents you need to produce what activities you need to have and so on so on it's often described in some kind of v model and it's quite often that it spans from top left corner from a system level perspective and goes all the way down to integrated details in hardware and software and on the other side you should verify all abstraction levels of this system before it becomes a complete system at the very top right corner again so, at first, it does not fit into agile ways of working. It's, it's easy to get into, okay, we just follow this V model, but then you have a clash with all the other development that you might try to, to change into something new, more iterative process. So, I have also experienced from ISO 26262, which might be what you refer to, to functional safety, and I've also some experience about ISO 21434 for cybersecurity. And since we are in the capital of automotive in Sweden, I think some of you work with an automotive. <laughs> so I guess you, <laughs> you recognize these ones. I don't have any experience by carbon dioxide standards and so on, but would maybe interested to learn about that. Um, so considering this, and you are in an agile company, or you driving an agile transformation. So what, what can you do? So I would like to share some, some findings or some experience that I've encountered. So one quite straightforward is that, okay, you have a definition or done of your backlog items or story level or feature level. So start populate those definition or done with the documentation or artifacts that is needed by standard. 
so it don't become that fuzzy. This we need to do, but we do need to do it in an iterative way each time we're changing something that has the impact of our safety system, for instance. And try to encapsulate as many, as many steps as possible of this V model in each story or feature or whatever you call your backlog items. So you don't create 20 that depends on each other. Try to span over as much as possible. And since it's long lead time, as you talked about Christian, it might be hard to do that, but try to span as many as possible at least. Quite straightforward from a planning perspective what, what you could start doing already now. Uh, two other aspects, I call it uh, intended architecture. Uh, try to limit the components or systems or subsystems that is affected by the standard, by a intended or smart architecture. So you try to isolate the systems. And minimize other functionalities in these components. Because if you would like to change a non-safety or security functionality within a big component, you need to do certain things with this anyway. So try to minimize other functionalities or implementation in these components. And then you can use anatomies, anatomies for indicating dependencies between more or less anything, but for instance, different features depends on each other, and an anatomy will give you the answer. If you change this one, you need to re-verify this and this and this. So if you have that anatomy as a mapping of, okay, now I have a backlog item, I will change this feature, and you look at your anatomy plan, and you see, okay, considering that, I need to change this and this and this as well, or that one complies to some regulations then you know that up front, instead of just finding it out maybe too late. So you can, you can understand for each change if and what you need to do concern, concerning a certain compliance and regulations framework by having these dependency maps available. Anyone that has worked with this? I learned it from Ericsson, so that's from in my world, from, from Ericsson. Knowledge. Uh, these compliance and regulations, they are quite often governed by a few experts in the company. Right? We have some department over here for functional safety or CO2 or cybersecurity. And if we rely on these few experts, to do all that kind of work and consult it all the time when we're doing this kind of work. They will become a bottleneck, for sure, in lead time and creating the flow that we need. So train, train everyone for what's, what it's all about and bring the competence to the team and delegate tasks to as many as possible so more and more people can do this and make it a list and let's <laughs> make it a bit less dramatic. It's, it's, it's engineering work. We need to understand why it's important, what we, need to, what we need to do to be compliant to that standard or this standard. But we need to train all the engineers to be able to do as many parts as possible on, instead of having a few people doing all the work or approving everything and so on. So make it less dramatic. That is, according to me, one of the very big contributors to manage this. So there are some things that you can take, uh, take along. So that was all for me, and I don't know how it's in Hawaii, but it, it's morning, right? It's morning, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.